Right, Ross Whitaker's documentary for AIB, The Toughest Summer, airs tonight and features such people as Michael Darren McCauley, Michael Murphy, TJ Reid, Katrina Cormack and Aidan O'Mahony and Anne Downey, amongst others. And I'm very happy to say Michael Darren McCauley is with us. Um, Michael Darren, you've been playing a lot of computer games recently. Is that how you've been uh, taking advantage of your free time? You're letting in my gossip. Uh, I might, like, so I've never owned a PlayStation or an Xbox or any of that sort of stuff. But as a child, I owned a Super Nintendo. So I rebought a Super Nintendo uh, from like a second-hand store, and it's been like the best thing. Keeping yeah. you sane. Yeah, like I've nearly like I've got up to like 150 CC on like Super Mario Kart. I don't know if that means anything to you, but it's like it was it's it's not easy. Like, uh, and and did you find that it was like literally falling off a bike? You could remember straight away what the muscles were and all that kind of stuff. It was so deeply ingrained. Uh yeah, yeah. So like, I know, like, I remember like the cheat code on like Street Fighter to make it to make it go real fast. It's like down, right, up, left, A, B, X, Y. Right. And I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And, and like that, that was the last computer I owned was a Super Nintendo when I was like eleven years old. When you think about it, the human mind is fairly remarkable. If only we had spent our time as kids like learning how to, you know, I don't know, do something that was gonna. I don't know. Maybe this is. Maybe I'm completely wrong about this. And actually, that's the right thing to have spent your time doing. How about oh, you mean like learning Spanish or like uh, the Fibonacci uh, sequence? You know. Oh, okay. Well, that's a different. Uh, I, all maybe the, Spanish all is the, the same. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, how are you getting on anyway? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah. It's it, it's kind of it feels quite normal. Kind of working five days a week, training pretty pretty much the similar hours as, as you would have been with kind of the county stuff. And yeah, I'm, I'm back playing a bit of ball, so uh, life feels relatively normal. What was the bit going back to play Gaelic football? What was that actually like? Because, um, you know, a lot of people took a lot of time to think about stuff and to, um, I don't know, to do a bit of navel gazing. Did you do any of that? To just, like, just take it all in. Um, I, yeah, a little bit, I don't know. I, I, I had, um, it, was, it was a nice, I, like, like, I suppose the lockdown thing kind of worked out pretty well for me. Time-wise, I was coming back from an injury, from an operation and stuff. And I think like every person coming back from an injury, you nearly always come back to training session or two too soon. So I had like an extra month or two nearly to play with to kind of get it right and stuff. Like So so, so that was nice. Um, and yeah, like I had no kind of like nippers crawling up my ankles or like, I wasn't getting stressed out in that sort of way, and like I, I didn't lose my job, like a lot of people kind of did as well. So it was look, it was it kind of it was it, it was definitely it definitely had a had a, had a pretty good uh, lockdown as such, because um, I know I know it wasn't easy for a lot of people. I remember after the the last All Ireland final, uh, Jack McCaffrey gave an interview outside I think the kids' hospital where he talked about the importance of sport and how you know he saw the joy that you bring to people on an occasion like that, and it wasn't about. Uh, putting context on sport. The visit to the hospital didn't put context on sport. It just highlighted how important sport was. And when it gets taken away from somebody who plays at a high level like you do, I'm, I'm interested in what that was like, the bit where you get to go back and feel the weight of the ball in your hands. Was that a, was it important or were you like, this is good to have normality? How, how did that play out in your head? Uh, I actually remember that interview because I think I had come out the week before saying sport isn't everything. And then Jack came out like the week after saying, well, you know what? Sport is everything. <laughs> I was like, damn you, Jack. Um, and he eloquent is a lot better than I did as well, surprisingly enough. Um, the, what was it? So I think I lost the topic there, but is, is what, what was it like so, just going, going, that going back? And yeah, like, okay, that's interesting. Sport isn't everything then. Going back to it was like, ah, look, no big deal for you. Or actually, did you feel the time away from it? Did change your perspective a little bit? No, I, I think it did. Without getting cheesy on it, like it was, it was nice to kind of give a bit of perspective to things. So I think everyone through the whole April, um, March, April, May thing. I think at some stage I was like, all right, well, there's definitely no football. That's not happening. And I was like, oh, it's definitely on. It's on. And no, no, it's off. And then I like at some stage I just like gave up on the rumors or gave up on the on, on the gossip or did, did you hear what Jermaine said down the country or whatever? Um and. Yeah, and just kind of went with it, and I kind of like like everyone was kind of just trying their ass off, and like, and, and I was no exception, um, and I kind of waiting to see what happened. So like, I think it's you, you are a bit more appreciative of, of, of the ball at the moment. Like, you're, like you're not even thinking about it in, in the county ball. Like, you, you you will be ready for it when it comes, if and when hopefully it does come. But um, like I think like I went out to play like a dead rubber game against Whitehall Column Kill last week, and I went out with the intention of like this could be my last game of football for a long time. Like, like you know, I was like, like there's, there's a couple of COVID cases that week in, in club football and stuff like so. Like, it, it's, it's kind of, it's a, it's, it's a nice to be a bit mindful and present over, over the football situation. Yeah, and did you enjoy it? 
that was the big thing, like the actual enjoyment of the simple act of playing football. The simple act of uh, attempting to kick a, a Gaelic football. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, no, no, I did. I did. And like, and like, I suppose it is a, a thing that, that can get lost uh, quite regularly. Like when you have to do something like a million times and like, you know, you forget that you're doing this but because you love it, you're not getting paid. Um, and, and that happens. I think that happens to like, well, I'm speaking for myself, but people I talk to as well. It happens at any at every stage and every season, or at certain stages and every season. You're just like, oh, why am I doing this? Like, um, and and then you kind of snap out of it, and and you, and you kind of get the graph out again, and that kind of comes and goes. But I think it was, I think this when it's kind of taken off you, yeah, like like everything, you're like that 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 kid in the in the pram when you take the rattle off them, they want the rattle. Um, and I think we were we were a little bit like that, so we're we're we're, we're shaking the rattle at the moment to keep up. <laughs> I, like, do, you I think I can, that, do you reckon I can keep this baby analogy going for the rest of the interview? <laughs> yeah, we'll try. We'll try. Um, I think it's easier when you Crow, don't have Crow, any. Cause you, Crow, Park you could be the, Crow Park could be the pram. And then... <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's pushing the pram? Oh, interesting one. Maybe John Horan. Does he push the pram? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the new dad spending time with his new kid. Okay, fair enough. We're, we're new I have, a creepy, yeah. I have a creepy image of me wearing the little bonnet thing, looking up at, like, John Horan. <laughs> We get our graphics team on that straight away, and the, <laughs> um, well, I, I guess that's what I was getting at, though, because like it would be so many people in uh, in the situation that some of your teammates have been reach a point of their careers where they there's no more mountains to climb. You know, uh, you've won absolutely everything that it's possible to win, and to continue to have the motivation to go back and do something, you have to remind yourself that you actually enjoy it, as opposed to I'm doing this to clock up records or to be part of a panel that wins something like. Uh, not to be too cheesy, but the mindfulness of actually being present and in, in going and, and deciding to go back and play for another year, like at some point you kind of you're not going to make that decision. I don't know when that's going to be, but at some point you aren't going to make that decision because it'll be like actually the rest of my life requires more of my time, and it's less enjoyable now than it used to be. Joe, uh, Joe Bradley doesn't let you use the word mindfulness anymore. Just, just in case you're uh, checking there. But um, the um, yeah, yeah, I think so. And I, I, I had a good, good chat with uh, David Hickey, one of my favorite humans on the planet, uh, the former, former uh, Dublin legend. But he, he was talking about that as well, and, and he was kind of saying how, like, yeah, like, but it's, it's, it's a similar, like, how do you motivate to win a second All Ireland, third, fourth, whatever? Um, but like, and he, and he was just saying it just has to be fun. He's like, he's like, like, you just have to enjoy your football, like, 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 like you don't need to kick them on the outside of your left boot, like I normally do, I know. Um, but uh, he was like, he was like, just enjoy your football. Uh, and, it, and I think that, that that's huge for our team this year. Like, like, they need, they, like, there needs to be a bit of crack around the best room. There needs to be, there needs to have that, like, oh, yeah, like, people buzzing, putting on, the, putting on their boots uh, and not just being kind of, like, obviously drilled down and tactics and all that sort of stuff. It's important. But lads need to have a smile on their face. I, th I think this year, more than any other year, uh, going out playing ball, yeah. And how do you do that for yourself? Like, is it just, is it just having to crack with them? It comes naturally because you're mates, or, or like, do you have to put yourself in the mindset to do that for every training session? Yeah, like I think I think like it only like I don't enjoy football when I'm not in shape. Uh, so like like that that's a, like any time I've ever like maybe got a yellow card or anything. Not that I'm an angel on the pitch at all times, but but, but like it's 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 when you're you're just pissed off at yourself because you're not in shape because you're not able to get up and down, and that's not enjoyable. So like I think. Firstly, like just get get yourself in good nick to 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 kind of do some damage, um, and and not be not be kind of like struggling or like you definitely don't want to be a liability to any team. Uh, so I think I think once you, once you have that, that kind of goes a long way. Um, and then and then I suppose look, it's it's, it's the kind of mindset about how you're kind of how you're kind of structuring the rest of your life around and making sure you're getting everything in. But um, yeah, yeah, like I think I think it's it's, it's a little balancing game that we all kind of like spill it over sometimes but um i think at the moment it's, it's kind of pretty easy uh because they've kind of of all the balls we're juggling they've kind of taken off the big giant heavy the county ball and we just have like the club ball and it's just like that's it like let's go at it yeah which is interesting isn't it that like they managed to stumble upon a solution to the age-old problem of how you actually might bring some balance back into the game and make it more enjoyable for the inter-county like uh, I think a split season when when it comes, and it seems like it's inevitably going to come, is going to be this magic thing where we have this unbelievably intense period of intercounty, and then there's actually good crack for the rest of the summer where everybody goes back to their clubs and we watch those games, and uh, loads of good stuff is going to happen. 
Yeah, like I, I haven't seen the ins and outs of it, um, of the of the proposal, but it's, it it makes sense. Like it makes sense. Like 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 people always feel sorry for the intercounty players during this. I don't know, like but like I think if any if anyone who knows what exactly what's going on, it's worse for the it's worse much worse for the club players. Like like they get I get absolutely shafted having to like put in get themselves unbelievable shape for April, and then they're they're buzzing, and then they obviously hopefully win a championship round or two, and then it's like. Okay, let's just let's just hit the training ground for another four or five months, and and it could be able to work me in a different place at that stage. So yeah, look, it, it, it's up. I think I think the, it, it seems to make sense. The split season stuff is, is 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 as I said, I hope going to happen at some stage. Um, but you don't know the, the the wheels of the GA can move move slowly sometimes. So hopefully the, the the cogs can speed up. It definitely feels like there's a momentum behind that. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the there's a scene in the documentary where um you're doing chair exercise slash yoga uh, with a bunch of people who haven't been out of their houses for ages. Um, talk to us a little bit about this, will you? Because it, it just was interesting to see you in the environment that is your, your day job at the moment. And um, you talked about connection and purpose and how that's important for you and for the people that you're, you're coming across. So what is that project you're involved in? Um, so I, like I've been working, I think I've been, I've been, I've, been, I've been talked about it quite a bit, but I'm working with the Northeast Inner City, which is a project, uh, kind of a regeneration project going on in around the kind of general Dublin one area. Um, so I've been, this is, I'm kind of just signed up my third year at the moment. Um, and it's, it's, it's across the board. Like I'm involved in the kind of community and sports side of things, but it's across the, the board from addiction, employment, infrastructure, education, everything. Um, so I suppose the, the, the thing that they kind of featured in, like, I, I just thought like that when they asked me to get involved in the show, I think. I just thought it'd be nice for some of the older folks to kind of see themselves on telly. I just thought it could be it could be a bit kind of novelty for them, and so I think it was one of those things that like people like we immediately felt sorry for the cocooners, people who had to like were just shoved in their prison cells, come uh, come flats, uh, and and were like too scared to come out, and uh, like it was it was tough, and we we're kind of asking ourselves questions about what we're we gonna do to try and like try and help these guys, um, as much as we're trying to do bits for the youth or whatever, like but um. Yeah, like so, we decided like on Wednesdays that we had we had a fellow come in and he played a few tunes and they literally just come outside the door and, and sit down outside their step and listen to a bit of music and then play a bit of bingo and then on a Friday I come in and we go around to like four or five different um different kind of retirement home settings um and I just do yoga with them every Friday um yoga I think I used to call it chair chair exercise so yoga used to scare some of them off um but it, it was great it was great and it was like it was it was literally like as much for some of them hadn't been inside their house in like weeks, I suppose, like because they they just didn't the messaging was, was tough for them and they didn't really get a hold of it. And um, so it was nice just to just see people enjoying them. And it's much about the kind of crack and that, that kind of connection piece and having a little bit of purpose about their day, even if it's even if it's once a week, uh, to, to kind of do something like like they're not they're not gonna be doing headstands anytime soon. Um, but they're they're kinda of enjoying it, yeah. How was the job going for you? Because I think you were in this time, maybe it was maybe it was October last year talking about um what the the day to day was like. So you've obviously signed up again. So what is it actually like? How's it going? Uh, yeah, look, it, it, it's going well. Um, like there's, there's a huge amount going on in the area. Like like from like I suppose we've been trying to like play on the outside of these kind of guidelines at the moment, which are tough. Um, but like we've been running uh, like basketball camps, GA camps, and have kids kayaking every week and all this sort of stuff. And just trying to provide from that side of side of things as much kind of as much opportunities as possible uh, for people. Um, and then like there's there's loads of things going on, like obviously, like addiction and education, and there's there's different schemes and grants and, and different things going on to, to to try and bring the area up as well. And it's it's like it's 100 going in the right direction. Um, and but yeah, there's there's obviously there's still a bit of a way to go. Yeah. Do you feel like it's possible to make a difference? Yeah, and like I got I got real pissed off. I was talking to a guard around the area recently, uh, and. She was just she she'd given up and she was just like, Oh, it'll never change. And it just that whole attitude, that whole attitude kills me. Like that 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 like I don't know why you're even in your job. Uh if if you just if you just have kind of no faith in things, I think you have to you have to have a bit of faith that things are going in the right direction. Uh and that you can actually do something like if you if you haven't like if I kinda of like if you wake up at nine o'clock, but every time you wake up at, and and by the time you get back to bed, like you have to have made a difference somewhere. Like um so and and it's it's the only thing that kind of like would make me sleep easier at night if you kind of feel like you've done something like like i i it's funny because i i agree with you right and i actually do think that um a small condensed area can actually make really rapid success quite quickly if if enough resources are thrown out and if enough opportunities um are spoken about and if if 
projects are highlighted. Uh, like even if you just look at something as simple as cycling in the city at the moment, how lockdown happened and a month and a half in, all of a sudden they just started making extra cycle lanes everywhere. Like straight away, no ifs, ands or buts, no massive committee meetings, no like grandstanding, no motoring industry able to get in and say, blah, blah, blah. it's like they just did it. Yeah, all yeah. of a sudden it's much safer to cycle, particularly in the north inner city. Like, and yeah. that's a huge change. Really quick. Yeah, yeah, like I suppose it's a great example of, of quick change because I was I, I cycle the roads every day, and I was like I never thought they'd be able to even fit these these cycle lanes in. So it's 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 great to cycle around the place now, and I think yeah, because people wanted to people people wanted that change and said shit, this actually has to happen now. Um, between obviously between the Green Party going in between, uh, the ecosystem the way it is at the moment that that kind of change had to come so and and, and the COVID obviously thing just just kind of multiplied everything and um, so yeah look I, I suppose look, we need we need kind of all all hands in um when we're kind of when we're trying to kind of bring up the whole area in general and um, so and that's just I suppose it's something that we've talked about like people, people we don't need like when, pe- when businesses when I talk to businesses around the IFSC and they kind of want to get involved and like to help out like it's like people don't need another set of jerseys or we don't need like a gate painted like People actually need jobs and actually need like a little a purpose and a, and a, and, a, and, a, and an exercise like a, a clear uh, like a way to how that you can kind of beef that kind of that that kind of like multi generational kind of trap where 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 people aren't aren't getting jobs and kind of aren't getting others are in the same cycles. Uh, so that's where we're trying to encourage businesses to to do and be a part of them. Yeah. So actually, try and address the structural issues as opposed to putting a, a badge on or a you know um sponsored by which is great but actually no yeah no 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 it's it's it, 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 like it's great and, and if you're if you're if you're a business around the area and you and you want to and you should feel involved because you should be you should be getting involved in your community um and it's it's it, it's really not about like people kind of paint a gate and maybe clean up a field and, and feel great about themselves and, and look that's great we we all need these things as well but i think it's more important that to get involved in a kind of long term or medium to long term of like how can you get these people in your employment if you're hiring hundreds maybe thousands of people uh like maybe there's there's four year transition year schemes maybe there's summer projects maybe there's there's kind of uh me- mentorship roles um that can, that can be done uh so like a lot of that is is, is important as well I, like that's the only way it's going to change right i i, I had one last question about this um I'm sure the political parties are looking at you going, this is great. He's got the profile of being a Dublin footballer. He's got the social justice aspect of this. Away we go. Suck him, suck him into our system. Keep him there. That's a safe seat for uh, 20 years. It feels to me like you might be able to achieve more outside of the political system, especially as you come towards the end of your career and uh, and are doing... Now you've got a bit more free time maybe in a couple of years' time, three or four years' time. And see, I'm going to... Stretch, stretch your career out until you're 40 there, right? Seven, seven or eight, really. Seven, seven um, or eight. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, if you get sucked into politics, I would be really worried. I just think that, like, um, the political system at the moment, as we see, is uh, not exactly fit for purpose. I don't know if you feel like you're pushing a rock up a hill in the system at the moment without political power. I th- yeah, I, 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 I think you're getting at a, a, a pretty relevant thing there that it's, it's like, it's tough. And I, I, I have no, I, 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 like, I don't envy any politician. I, I know, like, as much as, like, the, the last week was just mental uh, and and an, abs- an absolute was was mayhem for the government. But it, like, it, 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 it's it's not for me. But at the at the same time, to to make change happen, they need to be on side as well. So I, I think I, I, like at the moment we're kind of we're working with kind of political powers to try and make things happen as well. And like Pat Pascal Dunn, who was from the area as well, and he kind of ties in with the project regularly and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, like like like. But I think a lot of people when they kind of get sucked into it, they're they're they can be sucked into it, yeah. Is this is this what you want to do at your time? Is this like a, you know because it, it it's it's a, it seems to be a year on year at the moment, and obviously you're unbelievably busy in trying to chase the six all Ireland and whatever else comes after that. So, like, is this who you're going to be for the next ten years? Do you think? Uh, like I always said when I took on this role, because people like people, especially in kind of disadvantaged areas, even when I was working in my school in, in Tala, that I think. Uh, People sometimes can find it hard to kind of build trust, um, when they've had trust broken a lot of times. So people were like, oh, "I was like, thought I was in here for like a couple of months and be gone again." And I was like, "Said it like I'm down here, and that's what I am. Like I'm down here for the for, for like that. 
that's what I'm doing. Like, um, I'm down here nine to five, Monday to Friday, and every Saturday, uh, and, and and that's what I'm doing. And I'm not looking past it at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So, so, so that, that's where it's at. Who knows where the future lies? But at the moment, like, it's, it's the only thing on my agenda. Because there's a there's a real thing about um, volunteerism as well, and, and sport bringing people into volunteer. I, I would be concerned yeah. that people are going to volunteer less into the future, especially as they get worried about the impact of this. Like. In, in disadvantaged areas, it can be difficult to get people to volunteer. And, you know, you've got to get that culture going. And yet, at the same time, there are amazing boxing clubs and there are amazing dance clubs and dance studios that have come from um, that part of the city in the past as well. You kind of think, I don't know, it's a, it's a big work, big job of work that you have. Um, but I, I also would suspect you're pushing an open door with the community too, who are just crying out for a little bit of help. Uh- yeah, yeah, a little bit. I think look, volunteerism can be an issue. Like, uh, like we see that we're kind of trying to get a basketball club up, up and going, and and I think I appreciate it now. Looking back at my, how my own club was formed uh, in Rathfarnham, like and how much people like like you, you kind of forget about it, even in in Ballyboden and the club, like like what is it like about a hundred people give their give up their Saturday mornings to 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 kind of throw kids throw throw kids of football, throw footballs of kids, but um. I, I, I'm apparently kind of unappreciated that because sometimes it's, it's it's harder to get those volunteers and it's not for for a lack of want sometimes sometimes there's the the, the single parents sometimes there's there's extra jobs that have to be done there's there's, there's this and that and, and there's reasons but um yeah yeah volunteers can be an issue we're, we're trying to maintain things because like money won't be there forever you know it's been fun at the moment but money won't last forever so these things have to kind of run by themselves as well yeah of course well look uh, it sounds like um it, it has a uh, connection and purpose certainly on a day-to-day basis. Um, the football itself, uh, are you actually, what do you feel is going to happen in the, the, the season? Do you think there will be a season? Uh, yeah, hopefully. As, as I said, I think a few times during that kind of uh, April to kind of May thing, we'd be like, all right, it's definitely on, definitely off, definitely off. So uh, I think, uh, it's, 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 as I said, it's, it's a kind of like, it's a nice, it's a nice place uh, to, to kind of be out with it. Like, I think, I think people are just like getting themselves in shape, getting ready, doing all the extra little bits and, and and come on, May, like like uh, like I think uh, as as I said, like like play, like we had a, like basically a friendly there kind of last week, and just went out and specifically went out to enjoy that game. Like it meant nothing, and I was like, let's let's enjoy this because like who knows what what's gonna happen. So uh, it's 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 hard to know. Like it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a balance tonight. Um, unless they like do an NBA job and throw us all in the bubble, throw us in the Green Acre or down to what's that called Centre Parks, and like <laughs> and then yeah yeah. You know, I mean, that would make wings good, so. good TV, you know? I like, I'm, I'm so game for it, yeah. <laughs> um, it's an interesting social experiment, though, isn't it? Like, the, I mean, I, I'm sure you're up to date on the NBA bubble stuff, like, but like, that they had, you know, like, it cost like 180 million to like, to run the bubble. But like, it, and, and they all have to like, go around with like, like, like little, little like tag watches. And like, they obviously do, do the test every morning and take their temperature checks all the time. But then they kind of, if they want to scan into a door, like it's te- like that has to make sure the temperature is right, and then there's like proximity meter. So if I've been talking to you for you too long, my thing starts <laughs> beeping, and I and I have to leg it away. Uh, and but there's so much pressure put on them that like they don't want to be the one that like breaks the bubble. Uh, so it's like a kind of social thing going on. It's interesting. It's it is well, really though. interesting. Yeah, I mean compared to um what's happening where our uh, TDs are all off playing golf with each other and hanging out and drinking. It's like. <laughs> it, it is it is definitely a very interesting social experiment this whole time and um and living through it do you feel like it, at the moment it feels safe playing club football do you feel and hope that it like i don't i i i don't know how everybody feels right but it feels to me like most people are going about their day to day lives and generally being fairly good about the social distancing and wearing masks when they need to and that um i i i really hope we're going to have an intercounty season i think it will be important um at some point from a general kind of sense of well-being that some sort of, some sort of normality is going on, it feels like we're going to get that. And I, I wonder how you, you guys feel it'll be safe and it will be safe to do so. If Say, things, say the intercounty season started next week, would you feel safe going training and playing matches? Like, like personally, personally, I would, yeah. And, but but I, I think like, like what's going on now is that like everything that we do in our life and in our personal life and social life is, is going to take on an element of risk. And but but with that, like that, we have to, like you have to kind of negotiate. Is that risk worth 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 the reward for everything? But you have to, like, we have to live our lives at the same extent. Um, and I suppose I'm in a situ- I'm in a situation where I suppose if, if I'd asked me a couple of years ago when I was living with my dad, he would have been 
uh, like like very vulnerable at the time, maybe I wouldn't have been in the same situation. Maybe I wouldn't have felt as comfortable going to train and trying to come back and, and maybe bringing that disease into my house. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm obviously not that, not in that situation at the moment, and I'm I like I'm I'm I'm, I'm healthy and 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 I'm not gonna um just being as, as smart as I can uh, given the circumstances. So it's it's I think like look, we just have to kind of try and live our lives as best we can. Um, I know like we actually got a talk off of um, Jack Lambert, who's the the were the COVID specialist in the matter over infectious diseases, like and like I suppose it'd be easy for him to just to be really conservative and just say like, oh, no, don't do this, don't do this. There's a one percent chance, don't do this. But he was just like, he's like, look, we we have to try and live our lives here. We have to try and work our way around this. Like this isn't going away tomorrow. So, um, I thought that was refreshing that that he just um w- was just emphasising the fact that, like that we just have to try and try and take take on an element of risk at, at times and try and and uh, navigate it as best we can. Yeah, it's like. Uh trampolining or uh, getting in cars there's a, an element of risk involved apparently so um it's a fair point it's a totally fair point and i, I hope you're right and uh, look i hope you stay well as well documentary the toughest summer airs on telly tonight uh, aib's toughest summer michael darmacoli thanks very much